Hello, and welcome to what is probably a very memorable location for many of us, the Temple of Vishen. I am here today with my friend, Bulak Air, who is level 70. He has 890,000 hit points and some bonus ones that are bolstered by this gear. None of which are his weapons. And I'm also joined by this guy. He just waved at us. He has about 10,000 more hit points, so he's waving again. Also bolstered by a couple blades of carnage, a couple pairs of pants that you might remember. Pretty good gear, pretty good loot for the era. And they're both level 70. Eotar of War has about 10,000 more hit points. Let's see what happens when they fight. Who wins? What do you think? There he goes. Oh, he's got a full head of steam. So, I'll try and position myself here where I can record. Oh, I gotta make myself invulnerable. Or else I'm helping Bulak out with his life taps. All right, so this fight is going to be defined primarily by melee. Vulek Air has two area of effect spells. One is a damage over time with a slow component. The damage over time is about 250, and I think the landing of it is 250 as well. It's not a huge, not going to have a huge impact on Avatar Board here. It's more player focused. It also has a 60%, I believe, slow component, which is not gonna impact Avatar of War at all because he's immune to slow. You can see the Avatar of War is proccing uh, Blade of Carnage like crazy here. I'll try and flip back and forth so we can track where they're each at, hit point wise. There's also a life tap area of effect that Bulak has, but it's only 50 hit points. He doesn't proc it a ton. He probably won't, probably won't have a big impact on this fight. One thing to keep track of that I noticed as I ran these fights is the Avatar War flurries, they both flurry, but Vulak flurries a whole lot more. I think the reason why this fight, the Vulak fight from a player perspective was never considered this big melee encounter like the Avatar War was, is that Vulak is slowable, and the Avatar War is not. You'll notice here, Vulak, he just hit for 1400. He can actually hit harder than the Avatar of War. Which I find pretty interesting. Oh man, he had a really good round right there. Avatar of War hits not much less than that. I think his max hit is 1357. There it is, 1357. That's, they're about on par. I just noticed that Vulak tends to flurry a lot more. So those are the melee stats for these two. and. I've ran this fight about 10 times off camera, and one of these two NPCs won the fight seven times, the other one won it three times, so this will be the 11th time I ran it. This will be the only one I show. One thing that I noticed early on was that if Vulak in his loot table, if he has any of his life tap weapons, like the rogue dagger or Jalen's Katana or the Paladin Axe. That ends up having a big impact on this fight. It ends up basically deciding the fight. So I purposely spawned a version where he didn't have it. It doesn't matter if Avatar of War has Blade of Carnage because that proc does nothing to help him out. It's just an aggro attack for players. And I talked about doing this fight. I had a couple comments on my last video where I had Yelenak and the Avatar of War. Uh, well, yeah, I did, but only at the end. It was Yelena against King Tormax. And some, a couple people left comments saying they wanted to see Avatar of War against Vulak, which is great because I actually, I do this just for fun sometimes, uh, before I, long before I started recording it. I run these little battles and I see who wins, you know, between like notorious NPCs in EverQuest. And this expansion, was one of my favorites for raids. These two encounters, for example, I love. 
I never got a chance to do Vulak until much later. Uh, Project 1999 was actually the first time I ever got a chance to raid Vulak. But back in the day on live, I did raid Avatar of War. It wasn't until the next expansion, Lucklin. Uh, and yeah, I call it Lucklin, not Luceland. I call it Velius, not Velus. I just pronounce things more literally. I don't know what the right or wrong way is to pronounce these things. They're all fake made up words. But anyway, I love both these encounters. I know they took Vulak out of the game. That's the main reason why my guild back on live never got to raid him. We tried the Ring of Vulak once. It was, I don't know, we failed. We, were, we did it for like an hour. I don't even know how long it's supposed to be. We did it for an hour and then we dodged. But yeah, I love these two encounters, Avatar of War. I love the fact that he, I believe, was not killed until less than a month. Might have even been less than a week before the next expansion came out, came out, which means it took almost a year for the player base to figure out how to kill the Avatar of War, which is just awesome. But the main reason why I did my last video where Yelenak and Tormax fought was because yeah, it's cool to see these guys fight, and it's cool to track all the melee damage. But I also look at it from a lore perspective. And when you think about Tormax and Yelenak fighting, there's an obvious lore component to that fight, where you can see those two fighting in the game. And the lore of EverQuest, it's, it's subtle, it doesn't hit you over the head, but I always really liked it. I especially liked it in this expansion. Yelenak and Tormax, they each have a quest where they want you to kill the other. And the giants and the dragons have been at war for thousands of years. That fight makes sense. This fight, not so much. The Avatar of War and Vulak Air, they really have no connection to each other. And I think from a lore perspective, this fight is a whole lot less likely than Yelenak and Tormax. Main reason being, Vulak Air is one of, if not the oldest, dragons on the planet. And he's the king of the Temple of Bishan. You know, he lives in this little floating bubble thing in the middle of the temple. There's Arianor. There's uh, another notorious NPC from this area, Lord Vine. He hits hard. A lot of people thought he was actually harder than Bulak as a raiding counter. Probably was. While I'm out here, I want to talk real quick about zone design, particularly this zone in this expansion. I find it really interesting how they did this zone. They took an expansion that was based all around ice and snow and crystals, and they made this zone, which they knew would be sort of a prime raiding zone. And they made it, in the beginning, in the area of this zone, they made it sort of this grand castle-like royal architecture uh, which sort of reflects what you see on the outside of the zone and when you come in you've got these pictures of Vox and Nagathan and other dragons around the world and then you spend some time in the zone especially if you're doing the armor quest you're spending a lot of time in east and west wings you get to the north wing and it's business as usual as far as the zone goes you get here, and all of a sudden, you've got this giant chasm. It's still indoors, but it's like this cavernous room where you've got a lot of rock structures, and you don't see any snow. You don't see any ice. It's very in contrast with the rest of the expansion. And you've got all this lava down here, which is especially interesting because this was the snow expansion. It's like every great RPG needs a snow level, a snow world. This was that expansion. But here we've got this total contrast to that. And it's like the prime zone of this expansion. I, I find that, I really appreciated that aspect of it because from a Raider's perspective, or even just anyone that played this expansion, you're so used to that. And then you get here, and it's like you're almost rewarding them with something different. Anyway, let me walk back over. Uh, Vulak lives here. He's old as dirt. I don't see him leaving the Temple of Vishen to go fight the giants. The war between the dragons and the giants is mainly a Sky Shrine thing from the dragon's perspective.
And if any of the Temple of Eastern Dragons had to get involved, it probably wouldn't be Vulak. The only way I see that happening is if the giants stormed the Temple of Vishen, which they could. I think it's definitely possible that the giants would one day storm Sky Shrine. You can see there's some serious separation here as the fight is about halfway over. We can see the giants storming Sky Shrine, and I think the giants are strong enough that they could do it, mainly because there's not a whole lot of strong dragons in Sky Shrine. I think they could do it, and I think they could win. I think they could basically crush Sky Shrine. The question is, what do the Giants do after that? From a lore perspective, are they driven enough that they want to keep pushing westward after they theoretically take over Sky Shrine until they get to the Temple of Beast? And I think it's possible. I think it's actually probable because they're so, by nature of being Rallo's sex blessed children, they love the idea of war, and they want as much of it as possible. And we see giants in the Western Waste. We see scouts. We see them in Sky Shrine. We see them in the Western Waste. If the giant scouts are in Western Waste, it's safe to assume they know that the Temple of Vishen exists. They also give you quests and Kale to collect armor that drops in the Temple of Vishen, the North and the West Wings, and bring it back to them. So they probably have a good idea of the Temple of Vishen existing, but they may not know what's exactly inside the Temple of Vishen. And then the question is, how far could they really get if they storm the Temple of Vishen? Because getting into the Temple of Vishen, Sanalak, Klandakar, that's no joke. A lot of the North Dragons are tough. You know, that that's kind of a question mark, but... The question is, would the Avatar of War be part of that storming party? And I tend to think the answer is no. The reason being, the Avatar of War spawns as a defensive presence in Kale. He only spawns if you kill the Statue of Rallo Set. And prior to the outsiders coming to Velius, the dwarves, the elves, the humans, the players basically, it's unlikely that the Statue of Rallo Set has ever been killed or even threatened. Maybe the, the dragons stormed Kale at some point, but the giants were able to fight them back. Maybe the statue even participated in a fight like that. But it doesn't seem like there's any evidence that the statue of Rallasek was ever killed prior to the Outsiders coming to this. And when he is killed, well, the first question I have about the statue is, what is he? He's a statue, but he's alive. And was he gifted to the giants by Rallasek? Or was he created by the giants to honor Rallasek? That's, that's a question that I have about the statue, but... When you kill him, the Avatar of War appears, and he has some message like, who dares challenge me, face me in the arena, something like that. He has a pretty cool little shout when he spawns. He used to scare the hell out of me when I would be in Kale, and I saw that message, I was like, time to leave Kale. Um, but I also wonder about the Avatar of War. What is he? Is he Rallo Zek incarnated onto Norath? in a form that is not his true form. It's not the god Rallasek, but is it the earthly version of Rallasek? Because the only other avatar that we have evidence of in the game up to this point was the avatar of fear. And the avatar of fear looks exactly like the avatar, or Kazakh Duel, which is the entity that he's the avatar of. He's just a smaller version of Kazakh Duel. You can probably tell by this point who's gonna win this fight. So, Rallas, if you look at the little GM thing here, where I click on Vulak and it says Race Dragon. If I click on Avatar of War, interestingly, it says Race Rallos Zek, which to me is sort of evidence if you want to believe that the Avatar of War is Rallos Zek incarnated onto Norath, not a separate entity. But I also feel like the Avatar of War could be a separate entity because he looks so different uh, from Rallos Zek. Now, you could say, well, he only looks different because Velius came out two years before Planes of Power, which is when we actually saw Rallasek. And the graphic development came a long way in those two years, and they were able to make a more detailed model. And that's, that's actually probably the real reason why they look so different. But either way, if the Avatar of War spawns in Kale, it's to defend Kale. It's because Rallasek either sends an entity that looks like him, or he coalesces onto Norath into this form that we see here. So 
I don't think that the Giants would be able to guarantee the Avatar War's participation in any kind of onslaught on the Temple of Vision because I don't even think they know the Avatar War exists. I think that when he spawns in the arena in Kale, the Giants are probably just as surprised as the Outsiders are that he even exists. Because the only reason he exists is because the statue was killed. And Ralasek, out of rage or love for the Giants, decides he's going to send this entity, whether it's him or not, to protect Kale. So as a defensive presence, he spawns in Kale, and the Giants might be shocked and thrilled. Especially since the Avatar War didn't die until Luckland. He's about to die right now, though, as you can probably tell, he's going to lose this fight. I was actually kind of bummed that he lost this fight. I don't know why I was bummed. I guess I'm kind of an Avatar War fanboy. I just, I love the NPC, I love the model, I love the mystique behind him being so unkillable for the first few months of Elias. But uh, he definitely loses this fight, and Bulak has a lot of hit points to spare. Doesn't even need to enrage. I can tell you though, Avatar War beats every other NPC in this zone. I ran those fights just for fun. He beats Viam. He even beats Viam and Arianor at the same time. That was a fight that I thought was going to go the other way, but he won. But this fight, he doesn't win. Let me know who you thought would win, and if you have any ideas for other NPC fights I should run, I plan on doing more of these. I have one in the works where it's going to be an Avatar of War extravaganza where he fights Emperor Sragia, 30 Voxes at one time. I don't just want to do fight videos as much as I enjoy them. I also want to do pure lore videos on the lore of EverQuest, which I love. I've been working on one that is all about the lore of the Coldane. It'll be total story mode. I think you'll like it if you like the lore of EverQuest, so look for that.